Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming at you again with a machine v machine video. Every now and then uh, we have a look at the DCEC, the let's go with computers championship uh, games and uh, sometimes we hit upon some really cool stuff and that's exactly what happened. So we are going to take a look at the Leela Komodo um, game but before we do so I would like to ask you to please consider uh, liking subscribing to the channel and commenting as well all of these things are going to help me and the channel to grow so please please do so it means a lot to me and so now let's get on with the business Leela chess against Commodore Dragon the mayhem let the mayhem begin and indeed it was quite mayhem because Commodore Dragon decided to start off with a modern Benoni, which by the way is an opening that I quite enjoy playing with the black side, but on the very top level of chess, it is considered to be sus. Um, there is a very good reason why no one really plays it uh, on a regular basis in top 10, 20 chess, but uh, it's good to see it when, uh, when it pops up. Um, and so we are going to now have a look at a game with the Benoni defense, and this is one of the most classical uh, ways to actually treat the Benoni. Um, knight e8 is a little bit of a, uh, a strange move here. Traditionally, rook e8 and uh, a6, a4, rook e8 are the most frequently played moves here. Knight e8 is a bit of a, a weird one. Black wants to play f5, but very often in the Benoni, f5 brings about uh, just as many weaknesses as benefits. Castles, b6. Do not ask me about that move, please, please, please. I mean, occasionally black might want to trade that white squared bishop off that now can't be moved and developed to anywhere on this diagonal, but definitely another weird move. And by the way, my stockfish evaluates the position 1.3 already to white's favor. So, but again, there's not much use to have an engine eval when there are two engines playing, right? Um, 97A4, all normal stuff I would like to get quickly to... The real deal, f4, I suppose this is looking very natural too. And black counters with f5, the very move that I mentioned to you that indeed that was what 98 was played for. And so far so good. There is nothing really major happening here. Um, Lila decided to take on f5. And now we have got a very curious pawn structure where the d5 pawn is a little bit uh, of a funky customer because it has no pawn support at all. But the same goes for the f5 pawn. So now part of the battle is going to be about which pawn is weaker, but also about the fact that it's quite difficult for black to generate play. The only obvious thing in the position that really stands out from black's point of view is that this check is going to be uh, a move to reckon with, and the bishop on d4 in general is quite a powerful customer. But beyond that, it's not so easy to see how the game is going to develop from black's point of view. So bishop d3 was played, king h8 was played, very prophylactic, knight c4, again, very thematic play by white, the knight stands on c4 excellently in all kinds of penalties, and knight e3 is now an additional threat that is going to massage that tender f5 spot. Check, king h2, and knight df6. And at this point, those of you who know the Benoni structures, or to some degree even King's Indian structures are relevant here, you are already probably thinking that, oh, hang on a Ticarino, is it gonna be check and mate? Actually, I myself used that motif once uh, in a uh, over the board game, in fact, where uh, that a similar motif to that was uh, used actually in my game. Uh, I had a knight on g4, my opponent's king was on h1, and then I took on h2, and king h2 would have allowed the mate on h4. And here a similar motif is brewing, and so you would think that a precautionary measure is needed, but Leela goes like, nah, don't you worry, I learn from the best, which in this case is uh, Wilhelm Steinitz, the first world champion, who said that with my king I bravely fight. And wowzers, what are you doing, Leela Chess? King G3. And he says, bring it. Wow, that is just next level. I actually thought when I went through the game, I thought the idea was the second exchange here. But this turns out to be quite unsound because uh, 
We can't trap the bishop, it's going to get out, and uh, we don't have enough counterplay even once uh, we capture this bishop. So that was not the idea. Nay, nay, king g3. And if you think that that's not bonkers enough, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to accept that. Check this out. This is essentially forced based on my engine, as much as you can trust an engine once again when it comes to engines fighting engines. Um, and he goes like, yeah, no whackers. I will take what you give me. Thank you. Check, check. Bishop b7. I mean, just a tiny little mating. One threat there. Nothing serious. Don't worry. Knight e3. Um, no problems. If bishop takes e3, there comes the mandatory king takes e3. And the king walks to the queen's side and wins the game. <laughs> Hello? Like, naturally. Because that's how you play chess. And in case queen h4 comes... You just go like, oh, no problems whatsoever. We take d4. And when they play rook g3 check, we just casually walk into um, a discover check. And in the crossfire of all the black pieces, we just go like, hmm, she'll be fine. It's all good. No problems. Take what you please. And absolutely mind-bogglingly, there is no advantage for black here. As a matter of fact, the advantage is of, on white's side. I just cannot break enough material back here to make it work. And once again, if the king is invited to go for a little bit of an excursion, not a problem. You take there, I will come back here, and uh, I have managed to cover the king from checks, and white is a rook up. This is a, an insane concept. It's just unbelievable. No human would uh, be willingly play like this, unless his name is Rapport. I guess my good friend Richard would uh, consider this. So, let's see how it runs up. Bishop takes d5, because there are not enough pieces hanging on the board. So let's uh, throw a few more logs onto the fire. Knight f3. Note that knight takes d5 would expose the queen to the discover check, and then black would actually get enough material. Also note that this is not just a more logs onto the fire type of move. This is actually a mate in one threat. Hello? I go lemon, mate. Double checkerino. Wow! So, oopsie, wrong button, sorry. Um, so there is quite a bit to calculate here, but after all, that's what engines do best, right? So bishop d5. You know what they play here? Knight f3. This is like, what is going on? Now the rook actually gets to take f3 with a double check. So we go like, please, would you mind taking that knight for free and a double check? Because that's my best move. And indeed, after rook takes a free king g1, that's all she wrote. Oh no, wait, I'm talking nonsense. Oops. It's king e2. Don't believe the commentator. King g1, rook h3 and rook h1 mate. <laughs> I didn't even check that. I just went like, whoa, that bar went tuk tuk tuk. Um... What a motive, man. I, I can't get my head around this game. So actually, it's king e2, it turns out. And once again, uh, the walk to the queen side uh, casually decides the game. No problems. And so, Leela, sorry, the dragon, Commodore dragon, takes with the bishop. And now Leela goes like, fine, you can have my queen, no problems. And goes on to win this position. I will show you a few more moves, but I'm going to not show you the rest because it's a very technical and long and boring ending. But there are two more motives that I really, really liked. Bishop d2, knight e4. Very logical, trying to expose the king, threatening with checks, the whole shebang. Check. And here after king g8, which was not the game, we have check. And if king f8, then bishop g7 check. Brings about the sexy. And if king takes, then ta-da, for Carino wins. And if king here, then we take on f5. And uh, now it's just uh, carnage. Although knight d2 check still introduces an absolute family fork. But since the queen is hanging on the black side, none of it matters. And after king e2, queen g4, black can only take one piece. And there will be plenty left enough for white to comfortably win. The actual game continued with knight takes c3, when again, the mighty engine goes like, sure, rook here. This is not checkers, I don't have to retake. And better still, and this was what blew my mind again, 
after queen f6, inst instead of free take, comes bishop takes f5. And the knight on c3, ladies and gentlemen, simply trapped. Not bad. And I'm like, whoa, isn't that a tactical blunder? Hello, like I'm I'm thinking that the engine will blunder. I tried knight d5, thinking that knight d5, queen d5, and I'm winning. <laughs> no, 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 no. Engines don't blunder. Take take knight d5. Here is the blunder. This, this, this shouldn't say head, it should say blunders. Because now after queen takes f5 comes yet another four key with the horsey. That's how the horsey moves, by the way. And that's it. Game over. And so the engine here played uh, rook b7. And after b takes c3, eventually Leela Chess mopped up the game without too many dramas. I will spare you from the remaining 50 moves as it has hardly any interest for us. But whoa, what a crazy tactical mayhem this game was. I really recommend you actually to put it back on the board and go through that initial phase of the game by yourself because you will explore a lot of fascinating variations, although I tried to uncover most of it as best as I could. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching it. Once again, please don't forget to like, to sub, to comment, and uh, I will see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching.